In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the domain and range of a quadratic function. So let's start with the parent function y is equal to x squared. What is the domain and range of that function? It really helps if you can draw the graph. If you can see the graph, it's very easy to determine the domain and range. Now, when finding the domain of a function, focus on the x values. All the way to the left, we have negative infinity, and to the right, we have positive infinity. For a quadratic function, the domain will always be all real numbers, from negative infinity to positive infinity. x can be anything. There's no restrictions on a value of x. Now, the range, however, that's going to change. That's different. When finding the range, focus on the y values. The lowest y value that we can see here is 0, and this will keep going up to positive infinity. When you see the arrow, it means it can keep going up forever. So looking at it from low to high, it's going to be from 0 to infinity, but 0 is included, so we're going to use a bracket for 0. Now what about this one? y is equal to negative x squared. What's the domain and range for that particular quadratic function? So for negative x squared, it's going to reflect over the x-axis. So it's going to look like this. The domain is not going to change. It's going to be all real numbers. x could still take on any value, but the range is going to be different. The lowest y value is negative infinity. The highest y value is 0. So going from low to high, it's going to be from negative infinity to 0, but 0 is included, so we're going to put a bracket at 0. So make sure you understand that. When finding the domain of a function, focus on the x values that the function can take on. When looking at the range of a function, focus on the y values that that function can take on. Now let's try another example. Let's say we have this function, y is equal to x squared plus 4. Go ahead and find the domain and range for that function. And then try this one. Feel free to pause the video if you want to try these. So now we're dealing with transformation of functions. So this one is basically x squared but shifted 4 units up. So this is going to start at positive 4, and the graph is going to open upward. The domain is going to be the same thing, negative infinity to infinity. The range is different. The lowest y value that we could see here is 4, and the highest goes all the way up to infinity. So it's going to be 4 to infinity. Now for the next one, this is going to shift 3 units to the right. If you set the inside equal to 0, you'll get that x is equal to 3. So the vertex will be at positive 3 on the x-axis. And because this is plus x squared, not minus x squared, the graph is going to open upward. So the domain will still be the same, negative infinity to infinity, but the range is going to be different. The lowest y value is 0, the highest is infinity, so it's going to go from 0 to infinity. Go ahead and try these two examples. Now for the first one on the left, we have x plus 3 instead of x minus 3, so it's going to be shifted 3 units to the left. If you set x plus 3 equal to 0, you're going to get x is equal to negative 3. So we're going to shift 3 units to the left. Now this tells us that the graph is going to be shifted down 4 units.
the point of interest that we need is the vertex. The vertex is going to be at an x value of negative 3 and a y value of negative 4. Now we have a positive sign in front of the x squared term. If you were to FOIL it, you'll get positive x squared. And so this graph is going to open upward. We don't need a perfect graph. We don't have to get all the points. All we need is the vertex and whether or not the graph is opening upward or downward. With that information, we could find the domain and range of any quadratic function. The domain is still going to be the same. Now for the range, we can see the lowest y value is negative 4, and this is going to keep going to positive infinity. So the range is from negative 4 to infinity. And so that's it for that example. Now for the next one, we can see the graph is going to be shifted up 5 units. If you set x minus 2 equal to 0, you'll get x plus 2. I mean, x is equal to plus 2, so it's going to be shifted to the right 2 units. So the vertex will be at 2 comma 5. Now we have a negative sign in front of the x squared term. So that tells us that this graph is going to open downward. So with this information, we can now write the domain and range. The domain is going to be all real numbers. The range, the highest y value is 5. The lowest is going to be negative infinity. So looking at it from low to high, it's going to be negative infinity to 5 and 5 is included. So that's how you could find the range for that particular quadratic function. Now sometimes you may receive a quadratic function in standard form as opposed to vertex form. So what would you do if you got a quadratic function that looked like that? Well, you could factor it. This particular trinomial is factorable. Two numbers that multiply to the constant term 3 but that add to the middle coefficient negative 4 are negative 3 and negative 1. So to factor it, it's going to be x minus 1 times x minus 3. If you set y equal to 0, you can get the x-intercepts, which will be at 1 and at 3. The vertex will be at the midpoint of the x-intercepts. So the vertex will have the x-coordinate x equals 2. Now we need the y-coordinate of the vertex. So using the original equation, if we plug in 2, we can get the y-coordinate. Now this point is very important for getting the range because the range is dependent on the y-value of the vertex. 4 minus 8 is negative 4 negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So the vertex is 2 negative 1 and this is positive x squared so the graph is going to open upward. So now we can draw a rough sketch. I would plot the vertex which is here 2 negative 1 and we know it's going to open upward. Now we also know the intercepts so we can plot that as well. We have an intercept at x equal 1 and x equal 3 and the graph is going to open in this general direction. So the domain, as always, will be negative infinity to infinity for a quadratic function. Now for the range, we can see the lowest y value is negative 1. The highest is infinity. So we're going to go from negative 1 to infinity. So that's it for this example problem. Now let's try one more. Let's say we have another quadratic function that is in standard form, but is not factorable. In this case, you want to use this formula to get the x-coordinate of the vertex. x is equal to negative b over 2a. So a is 2, b is negative 8, c is 5. So this works if you're given the quadratic function in standard form or in ax squared plus bx plus c format. So let's replace b with negative 8 
and a with 2. So this becomes 8 over 4, which is 2. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is 2. So now we got to find the y-coordinate of the vertex. So let's plug in 2 into that equation. Two squared is four times two is eight. Eight times two is 16. Eight minus 16 is negative eight. And negative eight plus five is negative three. So we have a vertex which is at two, negative three. And this is positive x squared, so it's gonna open upward. So here's the vertex. And the graph is gonna go in the upward direction. So the domain is going to be all real numbers. And the range, we can see the lowest y value is negative 3. And it's going to keep going all the way to positive infinity. So it's going to go from negative 3 to infinity. So that's basically it for this video. Now you know how to find the domain and range for any quadratic function.